So, why are we here in the dockyards of London with some very old ships and some very old phones? We are here at Tobacco Key for two door. We are here because we're going to get to play with toys like that. No, we're not. We are talking today about the new two-door Ranger. The new two-door Ranger is basically very much along the lines of both the Ranger line and the history of two-door from Hans Wilsdorf himself. The new two-door is kind of the modern field or expedition watch. It's very clean, it's very simple, but it brings along something just like uh, Hans Wilsdorf wanted, something to the market that is just a little bit better than before. Now understand that before this meant something that actually worked. Nowadays, though, we take things for granted. Uh, we take things for granted that things will work well, which they don't always do. In the case of this new two-door Ranger, what they have is, for example, they have new manufacturer movement. It's the MT5402. This gives them 70 hours power reserve with a silicon spring. And um, it's cost certified, okay? So it kind of follows along the lines of the earlier two-door Rangers, but also the earlier two-door Oyster Princes, um, which were kind of the epitome of, if not defining, the expedition watches at the time. 70 years ago, uh, there was a great big expedition launched out of London called the British North Greenland Expedition. And Tudor itself was very, very closely tied to this expedition. They supplied five pounds of watches. Um, now this is very, very important because at the time, uh, these around 30 pieces of uh, Tudor Oyster Prince watches were a key point because they were going near the North Pole and in the North Pole or near the North Pole, compasses aren't exactly going to work very well for you. So they needed to be able to time uh, accurately so that they could tell where they were based on the sun, based on the moon, based on the stars, based on travel and so on. So this is a very important thing for the expedition. It was also very important for Tudor because Tudor was using this as a way to get data. They were using this as a way to get data to check on how their watches are working. And so with each watch came a notebook. And that notebook was where the wearer of the watch is supposed to put down, okay, if the BBC says it is now 10 a.m., wherever they are, uh, or 10 a.m. out of Australia, or 10 a.m. out of Britain, or whatever they could hear at the time from the radio, uh, they would hack and then they would, they would say, okay, uh, it is uh, ahead by this, it is behind by this. Um, the temperature now is this. Uh, keep in mind that these watches need to be on their wrists all the time because if not, they will freeze. The watches need the people as much as the people need the watches. Otherwise, the watches would freeze, which we found out when we went to the Arctic with a couple of watches. Anyway, so there. So um, along those lines, um, the new Tudor Ranger is very, very much uh, the history of Tudor itself, uh, whether it's the Ranger and the nod to the history of things like the large amounts of loom used on the very clearly defined indices at 12, 3, 6, and 9, uh, or whether it's the special ranger hands, um, or whether it's just the fact that this is a simple uh, daily driver watch that can withstand anything it throws up to it, and everything it's thrown onto it. At the same time, it, it goes to the history of what Hans Wilsdorf wanted, which after creating Rolex, he wanted to create something that was solid, but more available to people. So the advertising, if you look at it, the advertising for the early two doors was about jackhammers uh, and banging into things and so on, really tough stuff. So this expedition was just that. This was a scientific expedition that was much needed by the world. Uh, it was the largest expedition of its kind. Um, it's the first one that used vehicles, uh, land vehicles, as well as boats, as well as planes to pre-position and resupply these things. And they dropped these big snowmobile looking things, not snowmobiles, but even bigger than that, tanks, um, out of planes. And all these watches went through all that. So it's very, very, very interesting. Along those lines is how Tudor has developed. Now we all know the new Tudors are awesome. We, uh, we love the Blackberry Pro, we love the GMTs, especially the GMT Gold and Steel. We really like them. But this kind of goes back to what Tudor was when it started. A simple watch meant to withstand whatever you could throw at it and still 
not be too chunky on the wrist. So for those that are looking at the Tudor Ranger, you are looking at a watch that is kind of hitting above its weight right now. So that's a good thing. The new Tudor Ranger. Mm -hmm.